Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Hi, I'm Mrs. Grownie, and I'm your storyteller for today. And let's all say hello. Everybody wave your hand. And let's sing the song with that hello wave. Are, are you ready? Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, everybody, and how are you? Yes, indeed, my darling. And if you want to see the pictures, what are we going to use? Our eyes. Our eyes. Ready? Hello to my eyes, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello to my eyes, and how are you? Yes. Indeed, my darling. And if you want to hear the stories, what are you going to use? My ears. Your ears, that's right. Ready? Hello to my ears, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello to my ears, and how are you? Yes. Indeed, my darling. Then now we need to warm up our lips too because we're going to be using those today too. Ready? Hello yes indeed my darling good job well i have a song that i want to teach you and today and this one is we can all hear but this one we're going to learn how to sing the song with our hands so that if you ran into somebody who couldn't hear so good you could sign the song and they'd still be able to enjoy the song and it's called the more we get together because we love to get together don't we and this is the more we get together. You watch me and then we'll sing it all again together. Ready? The more we get together, together, together. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Because your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. You can do that with me? Okay, let's all get ready. Are you ready? The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Because your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Good job, everybody. Well, today we're going to hear some of my favorites, my favorite stories to read in the springtime. And you guys all saw the sun shining today, and we know that the grass is growing and some of our flowers are up. Well, they all grow in dirt, don't they? And my first story is about a little boy. It's called the belly button boy. You guys all have belly buttons. It's right in the middle of your stomach, isn't it, your belly button? And this little boy gets a little dirt in his belly button. And let's find out what happens. The belly button boy. It's one of Mrs. Grownie's favorites. Billy loved digging. The deeper, the better. And some of that dirt got under his sweater. At the beach, Billy buried himself in the sand, and even his sister would lend him a hand. When bi people told Billy, you're covered with dirt, Billy just answered, well, dirt doesn't hurt. So soon Billy's navel 
Navel is another word for belly button. So soon Billy's navel was filled like a cup with all kinds of things that boys will dig up. And under that dirt, that muck, grime, and grout, the tiniest seed had started to sprout. It grew through the night, and then in the morning, it woke Billy up without any warning. There in his belly, a little bush stood, and Billy just gasped, Oh, this isn't good. This was something he just couldn't share. He knew that his sister would tease him and stare. And as for his friends, they'd mock him and jeer. The things they would say, he'd rather not hear. So though it was warm, Billy put on long sleeves. He had to wear clothes that would hide all his leaves. He caught the school bus and kept to himself, then had it hid in the library behind a bookshelf. He leafed through a book on what made things grow, but the book didn't tell him what he needed to know. Like how in the world had this happened to him to wake up one morning and have a new limb? He went to the boys' room and locked in a stall. He saw that his plant was now several feet tall. He raced past the gym and straight to the nurse. He had to get home before things got worse. The nurse sent him home, where up in his room, he looked in the mirror and cried, Ah! I'm in bloom! He knew it was time for him to reveal the truth he had tried so hard to conceal. His sister just screamed, Ah! It's all that I need! What can I say? My brother's a weed. His father turned white, perfectly pallid. He said to his son, you look like a salad. Although the problem clearly had shocked her, his mother just said, let's go see the doctor. Doc Dudley had seen him through fevers and flus, but Billy's new problem was medical news. Your case is a matter beyond this physician. I think a landscaper should treat your condition. Let's all go and hear what my gardener will say. He sees things like this in his field every day. The gardener was kind. Wisdom shone from his eyes. He looked Billy over and showed no surprise. The thing that you've got here, green, leafy, and fruited, could best be removed if it was quickly uprooted. He gave a big tug, Ugh! then uttered, I've got it, and now that I've got it, I think we should pot it. He looked down at Billy and said, With your pardon, a boy's belly button should not be a garden. You've got a great gift, son, for growing things green, but your navel is one place you've got to keep clean. Now Billy washes himself head to toe, especially in places where dirt likes to go. He doesn't want this to happen again, though the gardener did tell him, dirt is our friend. So that was a pretty good story, wasn't it? Okay. The next story I have, I need your help. And this is what you're going to say. I don't know why he swallowed the frog. What a hog. Can you say that? I don't know why he swallowed the frog. What a hog. Okay, when I go like that, you're going to say it. This is a story about a little monkey. And what do you think he swallows? A frog. a frog. You got it. He's kind of a silly looking monkey, isn't he? I guess that's why he swallowed the frog. Let's see what happens to him. There was an old monkey. Do you see him? There, that's the frog. Who swallowed a frog. I don't know why he swallowed the frog. What a hog.
hog. There was an old monkey who swallowed some cocoa. It made him act loco, that chocolatey cocoa. He swallowed the cocoa to sweeten the frog. I don't know why he swallowed the frog. What a hog! There was an old monkey who swallowed a bat. Imagine that. He swallowed a bat. He swallowed the bat right after the cocoa. He swallowed the cocoa to sweeten the frog. I don't know why he swallowed the frog. What a hog! There was an old monkey who swallowed a toucan. I wouldn't try it, but you certainly can. He swallowed the toucan to squawk at the bat. He swallowed the bat right after the cocoa. He swallowed the cocoa to sweeten the frog. I don't know why he swallowed the frog. What a hog! There was an old monkey who swallowed an iguana. I wouldn't eat it, but maybe you wanna. He swallowed the iguana to go with the toucan. He swallowed the toucan to squawk at the bat. He swallowed the bat right after the cocoa. He swallowed the cocoa to sweeten the frog. I don't know why he swallowed the frog. What a hog. There was an old monkey who swallowed a cat. Gobbled it down just like that. He swallowed the cat to hunt the iguana. He swallowed the iguana to go with the toucan. He swallowed the toucan to squawk at the bat. He swallowed the bat right after the cocoa. He swallowed the cocoa to sweeten the frog. I don't know why he swallowed the frog. What a hog. There was an old monkey who swallowed a sloth. He let out a cough when he gulped down that sloth. He swallowed the swath, sw sloth to squash the cat. He swallowed the cat to hurt, hunt the iguana. He swallowed the iguana to go with the toucan. He swallowed the toucan to squawk at the bat. He swallowed the bat right after the cocoa. He swallowed the cocoa to sweeten the frog. I don't know why he swallowed the frog. What a hog. There was an old monkey who swallowed a tapir. It tastes like paper, that rainforest tapir. He swallowed the tapir to bump the sloth. He swallowed the sloth to squash the cat. He swallowed the cat to hunt the iguana. He swallowed the iguana to go with the toucan. He swallowed the toucan to squawk at the bat. He swallowed the bat right after the cocoa. He swallowed the cocoa to sweeten the frog. I don't know why he swallowed the frog. What a hog. There was an old monkey who swallowed a mango. He danced the tango while eating that mango. He swallowed the mango to flavor the tapir. He swallowed the tapir to bump the sloth. He swallowed the sloth to squash the cat. He swallowed the cat to hunt the iguana. He swallowed the iguana to go with the toucan. He swallowed the toucan to squawk at the bat. He swallowed the bat right after the cocoa. He swallowed the cocoa to sweeten the frog. I don't know why he swallowed the frog. What a hog. There was an old monkey who swallowed a croc. Plucked from a rock, that sunny old croc. He swallowed the croc to snap at the mango. He swallowed the mango to flavor the tapir. He swallowed the tapir to bump the sloth. He swallowed the sloth to squash the cat. He swallowed the cat to hunt the iguana. He swallowed the iguana to go with the toucan. He swallowed the toucan to squawk at the bat. He swallowed the bat right after the cocoa. He swallowed the cocoa to sweeten the frog. I don't know why he swallowed the frog. What a hog. There was an old monkey who swallowed a vine. He slurped and he burped as he dined on that vine.
He swallowed the vine to lasso the croc. He swallowed the croc to snap at the mango. He swallowed the mango to flavor the tapir. He swallowed the tapir to bump the sloth. He swallowed the sloth to squash the cat. He swallowed the cat to hunt the iguana. He swallowed the iguana to go with the toucan. He swallowed the toucan to squawk at the bat. He swallowed the bat right after the cocoa. He swallowed the cocoa to sweeten the frog. I don't know why he swallowed the frog. What a hog. Rumble, rumble, rumble. There was an old monkey whose tummy did rumble. Yours would too if you swallowed a jungle. That's what his tummy looks like. Oh my goodness. I bet he's full. I don't think I want to swallow all that stuff. Do you? Yeah. No. Well, there is a story, and my next story I'm going to read to you. I have to put on my story time apron. Now, this is not an apron to cook with. This is an apron for me to wear when I'm going to tell you a story. All right. And this story is a story about a... What? A mouse. And when I put something on my apron, you're going to tell me what it is I put on my apron. And this is about a mouse and what happens when you give that mouse a cookie. Good, then you're going to be one of my very good helpers. If you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to ask you for a glass of milk. When you give him the milk, he'll probably ask you for a straw. When he's finished, he'll ask you for a napkin. Then he'll want to look in a We'll put it right there so he can look in it. A mirror. He wants to make sure he doesn't have a milk mustache. When he looks in the mirror, he might notice that he needs a hair trim. So he'll probably ask you for a pair of scissors. When he's finished grooming himself, then he'll want to get a vacuum to sweep up. He'll start sweeping and he might get carried away and sweep every room in the house. He may even end up needing a mop to wash the floors as well. When he's done, he'll want to take a nap. So you'll need to fix up a little bed for him. And you must have some pillow material in there for him. He'll crawl in to make himself comfortable and he'll fluff it up a few times. He'll probably ask you to read him a book. And he'll see the pictures in that book. And as he sees those, he'll get so excited, he'll want to draw one of his own. And he'll ask you for some crayons and a piece of paper and he'll draw a picture. When the picture is finished, he'll want to sign his name. So you'll need to give him a, a marker or a pen. He'll want to hang the picture on the... Oh no, where will he want to hang? Refrigerator, which means he'll need some tape. He'll hang his drawing up and he'll stand back and look at it. Well, looking at that refrigerator, it will remind him that he's thirsty. So, he'll ask you for a glass of milk. Chances are, if he asks you for a glass of 
He's going to want a cookie to go with it. So that was a fun story. The story I have to, is about two birds. And what color are my birds? They're both white. And this is a story of a time when all birds were white and how they got their color. Once upon a time, many, many years ago, before there was any color in the world, two birds were sitting together in a tree. They were a crow and a peacock. Although the birds were friends, they had very different personalities. The crow was a very lively bird, even impatient. He loved to travel here and there and see new things. He would eat almost anything. The peacock, on the other hand, was a very patient bird, but somewhat slow. He never traveled far unless he had to, and he was very particular about what he ate. On this particular day, the crow, with his usual impatience, said to the peacock, Aren't you tired of being white? Wouldn't you like some color in your life? Well, yes. I suppose that would be nice. But what can we do about it? I'll tell you what we can do about it. I'll paint your feathers and then you can paint mine. Well... That's a good idea, but I want you to take care. Oh, sure I will. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me what to do. Well, I'd like some black dots on my back. Black dots on your back. Yep, I can do that. Lots of black dots. Yep. I, okay, I'm done. Now you can do me. Oh, no. Now I'd like some, some orange around those black dots. Orange around the black dots. Sure, I can do that. Yep, 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 yep. Got that? Okay, now you can do me. Oh, no. I'd like some yellow around those orange spots. Yellow, okay. Yellow around there. Yeah, okay, I'm done now. Okay. Oh, no, I'd like some green, I think. So maybe some green, just some green stripes. Just a little bit of, uh, just a little green on my back. Okay, green she will. Okay, there we go, yep. And maybe some green on my back of my neck. Green around her back of her neck. Okay, I'm all done now. Oh, but I love blue. Could you put some blue on me, too? Blue on ya. Okay, blue on ya. Yep, okay, blue. All right. That's so nice. Now I'll do you. What color would you like? Just pick up the black paint and dump it on me. Oh, I could never do that. Yeah, yeah, I want to be on my way. I got places to go, things to do, food to eat. Yep, yep, just pick up the black paint and dump it right on me. That'll give me some color. Just do it. Oh, are you sure? Yep, I'm sure. Just do it. Just pick up the black paint and dump it on me. Well, if you insist. Yep, I insist. I insist on it. Well, okay, here we go. And that is how the impatient crow, the noisy impatient crow, got to be a blackbird while the beautiful peacock got all those colors on his feathers. So that's the story of the peacock and the crow and how they got their color. Okay, now, we know now how the peacock got his color and the crow got their color. How about this guy? Who is that? A Who dog. That's a dog. Does that, he's a special dog. Does anybody know? Clifford. That's Clifford. Now, what's wrong with Clifford? He's white. And what color is he usually? Red. Red. And this is the story how Clifford the big red dog, how he started out, how he got to be red. Once upon a time, Clifford was white. But all that changed one day when Clifford got sick. He didn't feel well, he told his mom. His tummy 
hurt and his appetite was gone. He stayed in bed all that night and the next day, but that awful feeling just wouldn't go away. The next morning, Clifford's tail began twitching. He felt so strange, his whole body was itching. He went to the mirror to see what was the, this curse. He looked in and oh my, it couldn't have been worse. There were red dots on his ears, on his nose and his toes. There were even red dots on his elbows. He called up the doctor and he said, what are these spots? The doctor thought a minute and then said, chicken pox. Having so many spots made him feel sad. His friend Spot came over and brought him some soup. He tried to cheer Clifford up with a alley-oop. But Clifford, he just pulled the covers up tight. He said, Spot, when you leave, turn out the light. But the very next morning, when Clifford woke up, he felt like himself, a playful young pup. He pulled back the covers and jumped out of bed, but oh my goodness gracious, now Clifford was red. red. <laughs> well, that's what happened when Clifford Got chicken pox, he turned all red. But now you guys don't have to worry about that because you are not going to get chicken pox because now there's a shot for it. And even if you do get chicken pox, you will not turn red. Mm -hmm. Only that happened to Clifford. Yeah. Now I have another, when you go to the jungle, you might see a tree like this. And on that tree, you might see some of these. What are these? Monkey, monkey. Monkeys. And you're really lucky, you might see one of these crawl out of the, the Nile River. And what's this? Alligator. An alligator or a crocodile. Guess what they love to eat? Monkeys. Let's count and see how many monkeys are in my tree. One, two, three, four, five. Can you show me five fingers? Everybody show me five fingers. Five little monkeys swinging in the tree. Along came a crocodile, quiet as can be. The first monkey said, you can't catch me. Snap! Oh, how many monkeys are left? Four. Let's count them. One, two, three, four. You're right, show me four fingers. Four little monkeys swinging in a tree. Along came a crocodile, quiet as can be. The next monkey said, you can't catch me. Snap! How many monkeys are left? Let's count them. One, two, three. Here we go. Three little monkeys swinging in a tree. Along came a crocodile, quiet as can be. The next monkey said, you can't catch me. Snap! How many monkeys are left now? Two. two. One, two. Show me two fingers. Two little monkeys swinging in a tree. Along came a crocodile, quiet as can be. The next monkey said, you can't catch me. Snap! Oh, how many monkeys are left? This one is trying to get away from the crocodile. I think it did. I do. Ready? One little monkey swinging in the tree. 
Along came a crocodile, quiet as can be. The last monkey said, you can't catch me. Snap! Miss me! And away he swung in the jungle. So the crocodile didn't get them all. And I think, I think some of them got away. I do. Did they all get away? The ones that Maybe they did. Wait. Yes! They did! Look! They all got away! Oh, good. I was right. Ah, you were. All right, now I need everybody's help. I need everybody's help now because this is my friend, Mr. Gumpy. And Mr. Gumpy has a motor car and is going to take a trip. This is the so, book, Mr. Gumpy's motor car. When you hear your animal, then you're going to come up and I'm going to show you how you're going to come up with, uh, with the boy and the girl. And you'll, you'll put them in the, in the car. And then at the end, they're gonna, you're going to find out. You're going to have to come back up and reclaim your, your puppet. Mr. Gumpy was going for a ride in his car. He drove out the gate and down the lane. As he was driving down the lane, a boy and a girl came out. Mr. Gumpy, Mr. Gumpy, can we go for a ride with you? Sure you can. Sit there in the back seat. And so the boy and the girl got in the back seat of Mr. Gumpy's car. And off the car went, farther down the lane, until a dog and a cat came running after, and they asked Mr. Gumpy, come here, dog. Say, can I go for a ride? Sure, you can go for a ride. Huh, climb in. And the cat came. Just put it right down there. The cat came and said, we want to go for a ride. <laughs> and in the cat got. Excellent. <laughs> he drove a little farther down the road. And out hopped a bunny and a sheep. Ah, and they asked, Yes, you can, but climb in the back seat there. And so the sheep climbed in and the bunny hopped in. There we go. And he drove a little farther down and a cow and a goat came running down the lane. And they asked, Yes, you can. No budding anybody, though, and no mooing. Just climb right in my car. And on he went until a pig came running after. And he said, can I come in? And Mr. Gumpy said, sure. The last animal that came, and he was almost out of the drive, was the chicken. And the chicken said, sure you can. You roost right on top there. And there the chicken was. Well, they were all out for their drive. They had all piled in, and they were rather squashed. It's a lovely day, said Mr. Gumpy. Let's take the old cart track across the field. For a while, they drove along happily. The sun shone and the engine chugged and everyone was enjoying the ride. I don't like the looks of those clouds. I think it's going to rain, said Mr. Gumpy. Very soon the dark clouds were right overhead and Mr. Gumpy stopped the car and he jumped out and he put up the hood and down came the rain. The road grew muddier and muddier, and the wheels began to spin. Mr. Gumpy looked at the hill ahead. Some of you will have to get out and push, he said. Not me, said the goat. I'm too old. Not me, said the cow. I'm too young. Not us, said the chickens. We can't push. Not me, said the sheep, I might catch cold. Not me, said the pig, I have a bone in my trotter. Not me, said the dog, ruff, ruff, but I'll drive if you like. Not me, said the cat, it would ruin my fur. Not me, said the rabbit, I'm not very well. Not me, said the girl, he's stronger. Not me, said the boy, she's bigger. 
Are the animals going to help, Mr. Gumpy? Mm. And the wheels turned. Mm. The car sank deeper into the mud. Now we're really stuck, said Mr. Gumpy. And they all got out and pushed. So everybody get out. Come up and get your animal. I'll take it out. Get out. And everybody's got to help. You can just take, you know, we, Mr. Gumpy's got to stay there and dry. Here you go. Here's your chicken. You can put your hand right in there. There we go. And we're going to put him right here at the back. Now we got we to gotta try to push. Here we go. We're going to push. Oh, oh, they pushed. Oh, they pushed. They pushed and they pushed and they pushed. Oh, and finally the wheels caught. And off they were going up the hill until they got to the top. And Mr. Gumpy said, okay, everybody can pile back in. So everybody pile back in. <laughs> Very good. There they go. Excellent. And they drove on home. And when they got across the bridge and beside the lake, we're going to have the blue be the lake because water's blue, right? Then they all, Mr. Gumpy stopped and he said, today would be a good day for a swim. And they all jumped in the water and they went for a swim. That's fun to do, isn't it? There they all, all our friends, all in the water swimming. And as Mr. Gumpy drove away, he looked back and waved and said, Goodbye, come back for another ride another day. And I'm sure they all did. Can we all clap for that? Good job for helping me. This is a story about a fish. Isn't he beautiful, that fish? He's called the rainbow fish. And then... After I read this story to you, you guys are all going to get to make a rainbow fish to take home. A long way out in the deep blue sea, there lived a fish. Not an ordinary fish, but the most beautiful fish in the entire ocean. His scales were every shade of blue and green and purple, with sparkling scales among them. The other fish were amazed at his beauty, and they called him Rainbow Fish. Come on, Rainbow Fish, they would call. Come and play with us. But the Rainbow Fish would glide past, proud and silent, letting his scales shimmer. One day, a little blue fish followed after him. Rainbow fish, he called, wait for me. Please, give me one of your shiny scales. They are so wonderful, and you have so many. You want me to give you one of my special scales? Who do you think you are, cried the rainbow fish. Get away from me. Shocked. The little blue fish swam away. He was so upset he told all of his friends what had happened. From then on, no one would have anything to do with the rainbow fish. They turned away from him when he swam by. What good were the dazzling, shimmering scales when no one was there to admire them? Now he was the loneliest fish in the ocean. One day he poured out his troubles to a starfish. I really am beautiful. Why doesn't anyone like me? I can't answer that for you, said the starfish. But if you go beyond the coral reef to a deep cave, you will find a wise octopus. Maybe she can help you. The rainbow fish found the cave. It was very dark inside. He couldn't see anything. Then suddenly two eyes caught him in their glare, and the octopus emerged from the darkness. I have been waiting for you, said the octopus with a deep voice. The waves have told me your story. This is my advice. Give a glittering scale to each of the other fish. You will no longer be the most beautiful fish in the ocean, but you will discover how to be happy. 
the rainbow fish started to say, but the octopus had already disappeared into a dark cloud of ink. Give away my scales, my beautiful shiny scales. Never. How could I ever be happy without them? Suddenly he felt a light touch of a fin. The little blue fish was back. Rainbow fish, please don't be angry. I just want one little scale. The rainbow fish wavered. Only one very small shimmery scale, he thought. Well, maybe I wouldn't miss just one. Carefully, the rainbow fish pulled out the smallest scale and gave it to the little fish. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, the little blue fish bubbled playfully as he tucked the shiny scale in among the blue ones. A rather peculiar feeling came over rainbow fish. For a long time, he watched the little blue fish swim back and forth with his new scale glittering in the water. The little blue fish whizzed through the ocean with his scale flashing, so it didn't take long before the rainbow fish was surrounded by the other fish. Everyone wanted a glittering scale. The rainbow fish st started, shared his scales right and left. The more he gave away, the more delighted he became. And when the water around him was filled with the glimmering scales, he at last felt a ho at home among the other fish. Finally, the rainbow fish had only one shiny scale left. His most prized possessions had been given away, and yet he was very happy. Come on, rainbow fish, the other fish called. Come on, come play with us. Here I come, said rainbow fish, and with a happy splash, he swam off to join his friends. So let me show you the rainbow fish that you are going to make. You are going to make that rainbow fish. And how many scales, is he, shiny scales, is he going to have? Just one, because he gave all the rest away to his friends in the ocean. And it is, you, you can't have too many friends. And I have one more song to sing before we do our final song. It's on the back, and it's Make New Friends. And this is the way it goes. Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other's gold. All right, let's all sing it together now. Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other's gold. All right, just like the rainbow fish, we learn we need lots of friends, right? Everybody get out your big picture books to close up for the day. Ready? Put away your picture book. Put away your ball. Happy times go quickly by for people big and small. Goodbye to you. Goodbye to you. Goodbye to all. And thanks for coming for stories.